Genesis 18, verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent <clears throat> door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, and that word, my Lord, is my Adonai, <clears throat> and, um, uh, which we found to be significant. But what we also found here was <clears throat> that the Lord appeared to him, verse 1, in the form of three men, which is Elohim, which is, and we've, we've gone over a bunch of that, and we understand that, and that that is uh, the main, main place we saw that was in, in uh, Genesis, the first couple of chapters there, where uh, the only name used for God that we were introduced to through the whole creation and, and all of that was uh, Elohim. And it was that same one who uh, who said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And <clears throat> so we, uh, we had a, a little study on that. <clears throat> and, uh, and we found that that was the, um, for lack of a better term, corporate heart of the Godhead. That meaning together, th those three together, were of one heart and one being, and we understand all that. But what we see there is that 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 let us, and they're all in it. And they're, you're not getting a lot of let. Hey, let us make light. Hey, let us do this. Hey, let us do that. You're not getting a lot of that, but you are getting when it says and God did it. it that's Elohim. Again, that's. The Trinity, that's the three in one. That's them presenting themselves in that light. And um, <clears throat> so we actually have been, and we're, I think we're going to finish tonight on, the, on this first part. We've been studying that name, Elohim, <clears throat> and we mentioned that the next name we're going to get into is Adonai. And uh, so tonight we're going to try to finish off looking at the, the uh, reality of Elohim. And, and, um, and so what you need to do is be considering Elohim and Adonai. You need to be searching the scriptures. You need to be looking at these things and the differences and finding, letting the Holy Spirit speak to you. And it's interesting because you know, it says, uh, and Elohim said this, let there be light, and, and there was light, and, then it, and Elohim said it was good, and, and all, those, all these different things. But before, just before that happens, um, the Spirit of God, it literally pulls one of them out of the, the Godhead, if you will, uh, which they're not pulled out of, but for identification purposes, says the Spirit moved uh, upon the face of the deep. <clears throat> and so um, what we need is a new creation. What we need is, and I don't just mean the, the generic teaching. I mean right now in us, the spirit to move on these things and show forth the heart of Elohim, and the, which is God, God's heart that is resident and active in each one of the Trinity. <clears throat> and and find the truth here instead of it just being another class that I'm teaching or something. All right. So, <clears throat> um, uh, and he bowed down himself to the ground, verse 3, and said, My Adonai, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened to the tent unto Sarah, and said, <clears throat> Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and 
make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man. And he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. <clears throat> okay. And if you didn't catch this, there is several, uh, just a couple of main places uh, that maybe some of you that didn't, that were um, in the uh, First Peter study that have come now and joined us, that it'd be good to go back and just listen to a couple of the ones just before you jumped on with us, because it's got, uh, it's got some really important things, some really beneficial things that will help you see this. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to talk about the giving way of Elohim. Okay. Uh, that's, that is such a mild, um, sissified description, the giving way, the giving way. But it, it, it at least starts to bring us in to realize that the very nature of, and we'll, we'll look at some scriptures on that tonight, of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the very nature of them is to put one another first, is to honor one another above themselves. And we're going to see these scriptures. And so in, in being that way, then they are more aware not of, let's, let's put it this way, they are less aware of their own needs because they've made their goal to be more aware of the others. That's God. In the beginning, God. Which is Elohim. That's, that's a description of God. That's not, see, that's not a religious doctrine with them. It's not a religious thing. It's not a learn it for the cause of Christ. It, 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 it's just the way they are. It's not, well, we're Christians and we got to do this, you know. I mean, I've, I've said this in places you wouldn't believe and got away with it, that God isn't Christian. You know, I even shocked a few people and said, if he's anything, he's Jewish because <laughs> Jesus was a Jew. But anyway, God is neither Christian or Jewish. God is just God. And the way that they function within themselves towards one another is is the Ten Commandments, if you will, or, or all the law is fulfilled in this, and, and God is love. That's what he is. But, you know, that's not, it doesn't say God is loving. It says God is love, and love, in, in God's understanding, is sacrificial self-giving to the benefit of others, regardless of the hurt that might come to them that this might come to pass for others. That's almost a good definition right there. But that's, that's, that's in the beginning God. That's the one. That's the one who started it all and then opened his mouth and then started it for us. Okay. Started it by creating it all and then opened his mouth and said, hey, let's do this. Okay. So, you're not going to be made in the image of God unless this nature is in you because there's because the the best you can come up with the best that you can come up with is to try to be a really good Christian and to have really good ethics and morals and to say I will be kind to you and I will do this for you see we do that we do stuff like that but we're still have in the background, well, but I'm expecting you to do this to me in return. Okay, well, that's, that's just natural within God. But guess what? It's not natural within them to be thinking about themselves. And I'm only doing this for you with the expectations, expectations. 
Don't you love it? No. With the expectation that I'm going to get something back, something that makes me happy, something that, no, no, no. And Jesus going to the cross for his father is proof of that. He's not expecting his father to go die uh, just because he did it for the father. See, that's the difference between knowing certain truths that we think we know and we think we know God as opposed to it just being him and he will he will be the way he's supposed to be. Be ye holy, not go do holiness. Be ye holy, why? Because I am, not I do. Do holiness because I do. Uh, but be holy because I am. So you need to be one with me. Okay. Well, we we use that word one and oneness around here, and we you know we use it freely and flippantly at times, and and assuming that we've got a grasp on it, when we we don't understand it because in a, in so many ways we don't function as one, because we would if we were added into this we would do like Abraham, okay? So let's add, let's add Abraham in there, all right? All right. So now he's being kind of joined in in their minds. He's kind of being brought into to something, making sure everybody can see that. Um, but he doesn't, he doesn't realize it. He just thinks he's God's chosen. He just thinks, you know... Uh, God said he's going to put his seed in me and stuff. And so that's where we get in Genesis 15, where he, he complains and gripes about, well, where's the seed that you were going to give me? Okay, that's not that spirit in here. Where's the seed that you were going to give me? And, and you know, I, I, where's this and where's that and everything? And, you know, God says, okay, well, let's, let's talk about it. First of all, he made an altar and he made he made. Abraham go get a bunch of different beasts, basically the, the, the things that were normally offered in the tabernacle. Go get those beasts and then now you put the knife to them. Sacrifice. That needs to come. That's not in you, buddy. You don't even understand what's going on here. You're bossing me around. See, once you get to Elohim, you're going to see how incredibly violent that is to do to God when he is freely giving and giving and giving. And that was the deal. That's the deal. Chapter 15. God's the one who's going to give everything. everything. I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you this. You know, I'll be your shield. I'll be your exceeding great reward. And right after God says, I'll be your exceeding great reward, he's going, well, where's, where's the seed? Well, we're, we're the seed, you know, we're it. Um, but he doesn't realize that, you know. He's just looking for a kid that God will okay. First it was Lot, then it was Eliezer, then it was Ishmael, and then it was Isaac until and Isaac wasn't the seed. See, we haven't got there yet. We're in 18, 22 is coming. Wasn't the seed until he went up on that Mount Moriah, laid down on that altar. Didn't fight and didn't fuss and didn't, just was with his father and whatever his father was doing. Okay, That's when the seed showed up. Not before, not not before, not where it was manifested. All right. So then, so so that's in uh, for Abraham. That's in Genesis 15, and you get all of that junk going on out of him while they're giving and giving. So then we move along. Oh, and let's not forget one thing. 
Abraham is calling God Adonai. He's calling him Adonai. Okay. He didn't understand what it meant, and I venture that maybe we don't, well, let's just say it, maybe we don't understand what it means, and that's what we're seeking the Lord to find out <clears throat> what's the difference between Elohim and Adonai. <clears throat> All right. So then you go over here to chapter 17 of Genesis, <clears throat> and... You know, same same deal, same deal. He's just, you know, all he uh, he really doesn't talk much in that chapter, but the little bit that he says is horrendous, horrendous. So God appears. God hadn't been there for thirteen years, <clears throat> and he appears and he 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 says, I am Almighty God, and walk thou before me, and we're going to be in a covenant, we're going to be walking together, and here's what I want, I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this, and this, and this, and this. He does all that again, and he just shows that giving nature of Elohim, and really lays it out there, and then Abraham, again, like some sort of beast who has, you know, Let's use a different color here. This is this is pink, no reflection or anything else, just because it's the only <laughs> other color I got here. And he's he's not of the same. Can you see the picture there? He's different. He's he doesn't look the same because he's not the same because he doesn't understand the giving heart, not just the giving heart, the giving nature, not just the giving nature, the givingness of who God is. He didn't get that. So after God says all of that stuff, he only says basically, you know, a few things and that, that one line. And he says, you know, and God's saying, you know, I'm going to give Sarah, your wife, the seed, the time has come. Since you were 75 years old, now you're 100, basically. And we're, you know, we're going to do this thing now, and the seed's going to come. And he says, oh that, oh, that Ishmael may live before me. That's just like us. Instead of giving back to God and going, whatever's in your heart, however you see Jesus, that you want him to come out of me, you know, no, we go, well, you know, oh, that you would accept this stuff, you know, that, that works in me, you know, just, you know, I mean, you can deal with it someday, but, you know, we allow, what I'm saying is, like Abraham, we want to make uh, provision for the flesh. We want to make provision for the flesh. And so he's trying to do that. And then, you know, again, very next thing, God starts talking about circumcision. Okay, <laughs> okay, buddy, here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut away the flesh of everybody you're in contact with. You got too much fle fleshly friends. You got too much fleshly co-workers. You got too much fleshly family. I'm going to separate you from... From, I'm going to separate the flesh from you. And now you're only going to hang out with the circumcised. Bang! A good hit scored for God. Because God had just, you know, it had been 13 years. 13 years. And the first thing Abraham wants to talk about is Ishmael. And, oh, please... Except Ishmael is the seed. I like him. I've got to know him. I, you know, he's not that bad. He's not a bad kid. You know, that's what we're talking about about our flesh. You know, what's well, not that bad? And isn't that please accept this and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so that's chapter 17. And so as we said somewhere, and I, I don't want to go in the whole thing again. I'm telling you, if you didn't hear this part in the lessons, they're good, and there's not a lot of them. There's only a few that'll catch you up if you'll just go back. I guess we got access to go. Okay. Um, and um, 
So once the circumcision is implied, once the understanding, oh man, he ain't kidding around. He is not joking. He's literally wanting all of us to, to put the knife to us. Okay. Yeah. To apply the cross. Not preach it. Not know it. Not, not write about it. Not be in a church that has it all about it. It's not about any of that, folks. It is about the reality of the cross of Christ being the center of our life because our old life died there and our new life lives from off of, if you will, the reality of that death. Okay. So, um, that, that giving nature of God. So then what we read in Exodus 18 is... <clears throat> Um, we see that, uh, that Abraham had misused the name Adonai several times and he was selfish to the core while they continued to talk about all the things they're going to give without asking. They never ask anything. So all of a sudden, maybe Abraham's going, you know what? Hmm, boy, most of my meetings with God have been pretty yucky. I sit there and pray, ask for pray for all these things that I want and that I haven't, I don't have yet. And why won't you give me the seed? I've been praying. I need, I'm asking you for Jesus, you know, and just, just devoid of any spirit in life that is him. Just us on the rampage. The flesh is running wild. It's not, it's not even, you know, I mean, dead would be nice, but it, it's not even on a leash. Even around God, even to the face of the Lord. This is the, this is the, if you see this thing, you'll really understand in Genesis 15 and 17 how incredibly vile Abraham appeared to God until the circumcision came. <clears throat> All right. So, chapter 18, Abraham's sitting there. He's sitting in his tent door, he sees Elohim. He sees uh, the, like chapter 17 was uh, full of Elohim. Elohim. Full of it. He, but he's violating all that again. And uh, <clears throat> so he sees, he sees Elohim again. Or sees him maybe for the first time. And so he runs to him and every word and again I, I'm gonna I don't want to re-preach something that you could if, if by a desire of your heart and a hunger to know the Lord in a real way without just saying I want to know the Lord in a real way in a church service or in a prayer uh, on your knees privately but rather I want to know the Lord and I'm going to go after him and I'm digging in. And I know some of you are, and I, but I, I, I also know that some of you aren't. Not like that. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, um, so he comes running up to God and he's, he, he calls him Adonai again. For the first time he uses it properly, we haven't got to the full meaning and all of that yet. And I would like for you because we're going to end with this Elohim thing and start getting into Adonai. I would like for you, the next time we're together, which would be next Thursday, I guess, <clears throat> Lord willing, um, to have searched on trying to find the meaning and the, uh, uh, how about this even, and maybe even find the bridge that, uh, that is there between the meaning of Elohim in Genesis 18 and the meaning of the sufferings of Christ in 1 Peter and going through those and the connection. Okay. You may not get it. There's stuff. I've been saying stuff. <laughs> There's stuff. 
Dig it out. Look, pray. At least, you know, at least if you've applied your heart and you said, Lord, I want to know you and you don't get anything, don't go, well, he didn't say nothing to me. You know, oh, you know, you're the rock of Gibraltar. You spent, you know, one day really getting after him. No, no, he's worth it. Our whole life is supposed to be filled with him because he's our whole life. But we got too much of us that we've reserved. It's like it's like we're we're not just the a house, supposedly the house of God. We're the apartment complex of Randy Nussbaum where we've got all these different things living in little apartments all over us. And then Jesus is, you know, probably living in the basement and tucked down, you know, down low. So anyway, please, if you will, I, I'm just asking you for the Lord's sake. I am. Um, just find out. And it won't, I won't, you know, if you don't see anything, that's okay. I, I just know that you can't get it. I mean, this is, this is the same truth with Bible school. You can't get it from just sitting there. I didn't get it from sitting there. I got most of, when I was in Bible school, I got most of what I got from the Lord when I wasn't in class, but I had that spirit on me and I was in an environment that put that in me that made me want to hunger and thirst. Anyway, all right. So <clears throat> what we did was we went over um, uh, all the different aspects of how, how um, Abraham in Genesis 18 recognized, he used the name this time, Adonai, and recognized that that was my Adonai, his, his, that's what he calls me, my Adonai. Okay, so, um, so let me read this. The giving way of Elohim. The biggest thing about the Trinity is that they give and bless one another. They also know the other will bless back, but that's not the issue. When one goes into death or weakness, they treat the other with extreme respect and humility. When one, uh, one name used to show that to Elohim is to use... Uh, that's mis messed up there. Okay. Uh, they honor the other above themselves. Okay, so these are some of the main ones. So what I'm going to do, because I see that the time's getting away, is I want to just go through a bunch of scriptures and show you this, the giving nature and way of, of them. But not just, see, what all we see about that is the giving. No, and the total lack of, of wanting anything in return because they're so focused on you being blessed. That's what, that's important. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Colossians 1, 15 through 19. <clears throat> and this will be summed up in verse 19. Okay. Who, this is uh, verse 15. <clears throat> Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in the heaven that are in the earth, invisible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. He, he is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. <clears throat> Here it is. That in all things he might have the preeminence, it's the end of verse 18. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. There it is. Okay. So here's the Father. Here's the Son. And this is all just being poured on the Son from the Father. Now the Father's not going, well, I'm the Father. I should be. No, that's not how this works. See, well, I have a right. You're wrong. You don't have a right. You just think you have a right. You have a right because your flesh tells you. Your uncircumcised flesh tells you you have a right. You have a right to die with him so that his nature can come forth in you that you might glorify the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit by another spirit that is the family spirit of him indwelling us in a real way without religion. <clears throat> All right. Um, John 14, verse 24, starting at verse 24. 
He, this is Jesus speaking, he that loveth me, let's see, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, <laughs> okay? So it looks like he's talking about himself. And then he says, but the word is not that I have is not mine, but the Father's who sent me the Son. He sent me. I'm not here on my own. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, so he's, this is Jesus speaking to the Father. And now he's, let's see it here. This is Jesus speaking of the Father and saying that he sent me and he's the one that I, I, I can't even speak without him. And then he's going to bring in the other person of Elohim. Because they, they're just crazy like that. We're just selfish like that, like us. But they're just crazy to give and to love and to honor someone else. And, you know, you read that in the scriptures and it says when uh, when. One rejoices, we all rejoice. <laughs> when one weeps, we all weep. We're, we're pitiful on that. Well, we, they, how come they get to rejoice and they're being lifted up and stuff? Have you ever done that? Have you ever looked at somebody that got blessed and exalted and then, you know, just, you know, it just bummed you out? Well, yeah, of course you have because that's your flesh and you're coddling it. And acting like it's more important than what's going on here with God exalting somebody else at the moment. Instead of jumping on that boat with Him, you jump in your old flesh pot. You just feed yourself on your flesh all the time. It's time to break that. It's time to, it's time to stop. It's time to stop, folks. Yeah, look around you, world, and in the Spirit, it's time to stop. All right, this is great now. The son, <laughs> I just love this so much. So there he is. He hadn't even finished one verse with the Father, and now he jumps in with the Holy Spirit. These things have I spoken unto you, <clears throat> being yet present with you, uh, but the Comforter, uh, two verses, and then he speaks of the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, Oh my God! Look at the look at the giving and the rolling between them. Look at this way they just it's just it's it's not linear. It's not it's just uh, breaks forth upon those who are part of this spirit in this nature because they can be trusted and they know what's in all men, but they know that. Do they know that in, in you? Do they know that in this body? We say he does, but I don't know. I mean, I don't. I mean, in the sense of we are being dealt with by the Spirit of God to the glory of Jesus so that the Father might be satisfied with the Son. All right. So, um, <clears throat> he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Okay. So he's going, I said a bunch of stuff to you, but you didn't get it. No, we did. Because you remember many times I said, Jesus said, do you understand now? Yeah, I understand. We get it. And Jesus is going, oh, but you did understand, but let's go on from here. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, so Jesus has done all this great teaching. We're, we're eating of a bunch of it. And he's going, well, really, you know, it's intentionally put where you wouldn't get it from me so that the Holy Spirit could declare me so I didn't have to declare myself. I don't want to be declared. I want him. I want him to flow in this spirit. And I want to just be, you know, lowly, but at the same time exalted because that's that is the exaltation. Hard to understand. All right. Uh, and bring all things to remembrance, uh, your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not of this world giveth, give I yet unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. 
uh, for my Father is greater than I. If you love me, this is love. God is love. If you loved me, you would let me go to him. You would let the Holy Spirit come to you and we'd all switch places and we'd all get, get this thing. But they're going, well, no, we're in this world and, you know, you're the best teacher we ever had. And he's going, look, you didn't even get it. I have to go away. The Holy Spirit. He's the one you need. <laughs> Can you see Jesus? I mean, if you could just understand their heart. We just hear the words. But I mean, I can just hear his heart bursting. You know, the, the words that I speak are not my own. You know, the, uh, they're the fathers. You know, oh, the comforter. If I don't go away, the comforter ain't going to come. I'm telling you, you're going to want this guy. <laughs> I'm thinking more cowbell now for some reason. <clears throat> anyway. So, so there's, you know, if I could spin this thing, there's, they're re rotating within this thing of who and what, at what time, and yet they're all continually come to the forefront, go down. Another one comes to the forefront, go down. There's just this amazing thing called Elohim. All right. Um, and then the last part of that, of, of verse 28, uh, is... Um, if you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Okay, wasn't it the Father in Colossians we read that all fullness would dwell in Jesus and he would have, in all things, have the preeminence and whatever? See, nobody takes it to themselves. And again, shame on you and me if we're, we're continually trying to take it to ourselves. No wonder you don't, never really get it or, or, or never really satisfied because the satisfaction comes when you're flowing within this. It's when you have been brought into this spirit with the Godhead. You're not God, but you've been brought into this spirit in this nature. Then, and that's what Abraham's doing in chapter uh, Genesis chapter 18. Man, he's pouring it on, baby. And he's, he's loving it, too. He's, he's got it. He understands it. Okay. But he doesn't understand it fully because we have some more to go. And, you know, anyway. <clears throat> All right. First John 4, 4. Uh, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Okay. So your victory isn't because uh, he has equipped you and you've got all this stuff and people say well you know they quote ephesians um uh, i can't even remember uh where he's equipping the saints and everything but just the verses down there ends up is that so that christ will be all and in all and it's it's this this spirit of 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 it being about him and that's what this is saying uh, greater is he that is in you can you go with that? You know, this is John, the beloved, the one who preached love. Uh, can you be content with you're not the greater one that he is and that you would be less? All right. <clears throat> John 12, 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which hath sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak okay so he's saying i'm not speaking of myself i this is not about me you know look at look at the scriptures that talk about the devil i will be like the most high god i will ascend in the heavens i will do this i will become that i'm going to be this it's the exact opposite does he understand <laughs> do you understand this picture now <laughs> does he understand um, what's going on here uh, with God, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Does he grasp it? No! He grasps all right, but not the reality of how God is. He just sees that God's, I will be, I will be like God. I'll be exalted. I'll be this. This is, oh, see, so you don't even understand God, do you? You think God is all about you being exalted. Well, Satan, 
you're just going to have to figure this thing out because he's going to go to a cross and get so low that it'll blow your mind when you figure out that through that, you're done. You're done. <clears throat> All right. Remember, we started a little late because I was talking with Mike and stuff. <laughs> um, John 12, 49. <clears throat> um, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. Did I already say, say this one? Yes. Okay, John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that little verse right there, if you took the time to look at it really closely, it's not just like he's saying, um, uh, well, you know, the Father's in me, and he, he does, you know, this stuff. There's a real, and well, in all of this, but there's a real way that it's put so that you can see that there's just this, I don't know how to say it to you. Sorry. John 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. He's going to guide you into all truth because he's not going to speak of himself. It wouldn't be all truth if he spoke of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, which is the same thing Jesus said. Whatever I hear from my Father, that's what I speak. And he will show you things to come, and he will glorify me, and he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. This is the spirit of this thing. This is it. Okay, uh, three more verses, and we'll be done. 1 Corinthians 15, starting with verse 24. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24 through 28. <clears throat> then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God to the Father. This is talking about Jesus. When he, Jesus, shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he, the Father, Hebrews, this is Hebrews 2, 7, and 8, that proves that this is talking about the Father. For he, the Father, hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, uh, oh, I'm, I guess I'm starting with Hebrews here, sorry. It is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when he when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all and in all. I am in the Father, Father's in me. They're all all of it summed up in the beginning Elohim bring it all this world trees and plants and years and wars and people and and good you know people really serving God some not you know and, and horrible beasts and everything's going and going and going and you know the we're, we're building airplanes and then we're flying you know we're doing going to the moon all this kind of stuff and then but when we come to the end it's God here at the beginning Bingo! It's God as Elohim being all and in all that are allowing that spirit and nature to guide them. All right, Hebrews 2, 7 and 8. Sorry for the mix up on the last bunch of scriptures. But they're there. It's, that was uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. Hebrews 2, 7 through 8. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Yeah, this is the, this is the follow-up on that, what I just read. So when you search these scriptures, which I know you wrote them down, and you fully intend to search these out, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28 goes along with Hebrews 2, 7 and 8 because they're confirming the, one another. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor, because he was in the corridor and 
came through in the right spirit. <clears throat> and did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For he that is, uh, he, for in that he put all things under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Because we need to walk through that corridor. All right, last verse, and then we will wrap it up. John 16, verse 5 through 7. <clears throat> but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, meaning if I am truly greater uh, uh, to you than you are, then you should have asked me. You should have asked me, but none of you have asked me. You're just weeping and crying over the fact that you're going to lose something instead of thinking about others and th that I'm going to get to go to the Father. <clears throat> Uh, none of you asketh me, <clears throat> whither goest thou? But because I have, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Even in your sad, sad, self-pity moment, uh, it's nevertheless, it is important. It is expedient for you, it's in your best interest, that I go away. I'm not it. We are it, he could say. Nevertheless, um, uh, I go away. The Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. All right? And that's 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 Jesus setting it up. He's taking us out of the he's taking us out of the earth realm. Here's the planet Earth, and here's our little lives in here. And he's he's coming, and he's taking. Jesus comes and he dies on the cross, and he's taking us out of this realm. And he's not just bringing us into the realm of a new creation. It's new to us. It's the same. It's just God eternal bringing us into him i and you and you and me and if you will putting us here where abraham is having the faith of abraham and but but it doesn't just automatically happen folks it just it just doesn't automatically happen it it happens when we begin to understand God, we begin to know Him as He is instead of how religion has painted it through doctrines into our mind. And who wants to, as it were, die and stand before God and go, who are you? I don't even, you know, to have really be thrown so badly because we, this isn't the God I was told it was God. This isn't, you know. Um, but see, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about that. I'm not, I wasn't worried about that before I knew this. I want to know the Lord. That's it. That's what I'm worried about. I want to know the Lord the way he wants me to know him. And, and that's not the way Randy wants you to know him. It's the way the Holy Spirit wants you to know him. So let's, on that note, let's pray. Father, thank you that um, there are hungry hearts here that long after, that long after your heart, that go out of the way, that, that get into the Word, that look up Scripture, that, that, that really, really don't want to just lay hold of you, but want you to lay hold of them. And they are diligent and they are, you said, if we seek you with all of our hearts, we will find you. And so, Father, 
just stir us up, awaken us, in some cases awaken us, out of our slumber, out of our dullness, that get so easily distracted because we have no rope, we have no direct line to you, we, we get distracted onto the other lines and the other things that matter more in this earth or that we're more interested in. But you, you, you are calling us. You are not giving up. You are setting forth before us this day, as it were, death and life. Choose life. We know that to choose his life is to choose death, but it's a different kind of death. When you said that to Israel through, through Joshua, who represents you, Jesus, then can we not hear you say it as our Joshua right now? Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Yourself, your flesh, your life, your goals, your plans, your... Um, uh, attributes of, of passivity and dullness? Are we going to serve those day in and day out? Or are we going to awaken? Are we going to arise and come away and come away to you? So we, we, have, we don't look to ourselves. We look to you, but we... We, not, we must look to you not as passive beings that are not going to give back to you like Abraham did and just take and take and take. We look to you and say, give it, put that in us, that life, that nature, that way, and I will spend the rest of my life pouring out upon you. Father, Hear our prayers and see our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.